Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hi. 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 Good evening. Welcome to lecture five. In this lecture, we will be discussing a corporate social responsibility and electronic procurement. In the last lecture, we discussed about procurement strategies, for example, single sourcing or multiple sourcing. Uh, we discussed about uh, sourcing from a small supplier or large supplier, sourcing directly from manufacturer or distributor and agents. We also discussed about a supplier relationship management and supplier development in case you do not have any existing supplier for a product, then you need to develop supplier. You need to convince supplier to supply that new product for you. And supplier relationship in that case, we discussed about the importance of maintaining a good relationship with supplier by creating trust, cooperation, and commitment among the supply chain members, especially the suppliers. And we also uh, had a practice exercise on analytical hierarchy process using uh, Excel template that I provided you. And we practiced uh, how to select the best supplier. Uh, if you have any uh, problem in solving that uh, issue, then uh, let me know. We can discuss it today as well. Relating to uh, group formation, if you still do not have any group, uh, please let me know. Today's discussion agenda is a discussion on corporate social responsibility and e-procurement. Um, so I have uploaded all relevant materials in UTS Canvas site. If you look into Canvas site, uh, you will find pre-class activities uh, and study materials all are there uh, and lecture slides um, are uploaded tutorial slides all are uploaded in the uh, class activities uh, folder uh, important note for you um, while you will write uh, your case study relating to your assessment you do not need to mention the name of the case company. You do not need to mention the name of any contact person. So uh, it's all anonymous. If you collect uh, primary data, for example, if you have a phone interview with someone, you do not need to mention the name. You do not need to mention about the case company name as well. Just write X, Y, Z or ABC and co company. So that's uh, anonymous. So let's start with uh, corporate social responsibility. So what is corporate social responsibility? Um, according to uh, guidance standard on social responsibility, ISO 26,000, CSR is the responsibility of an organization for the impact of its decision on, and activities on society and environment, both transparent and ethical behavior that contributes to sustainable development, including health and welfare uh, of society, takes into account uh, the exception, expectations of stakeholders, uh, is in compliance with the applicable law. So basically, when an organization runs its business, uh, run its operations, it always has some impact. Uh, for example, impact on society, impacts on environment, so social aspects, for example, your employees are working there and your employees, how are you treating your employees? Are you uh, creating a good environment for the employees? Uh, are they safe there? Uh, are you paying fair wages? Are you providing benefits? Do they have freedom of association so that they can express their voice um, and raise their voice? And environmental issues such as pollution. So your 
uh, industrial activities uh, either may have water pollution or air pollution or soil pollution or any type of uh, other type of pollution like noise for example so uh, that creates sound pollution so you need to take that responsibility and uh, what uh, you are taking um, responsibility uh, in order to uh, reduce the impact of your industrial activity or your business activity for example you can compensate the society uh, by other means or you can uh, take a, a strategies which can minimize pollution uh, it may not make to zero pollution but it's make uh, effort to minimize pollution minimize impact on the employees working there so that's uh, the thing uh, called csr or corporate social responsibility that is corporates or the business organizations need to take responsibility of what they are doing to environment and society so here you see triple bottom line uh, three pillars social environmental and economic so uh, if we tell about a corporate social responsibility sustainability um, sustainable supply chain management um, ethical uh, behavior or ethical operations so these ethical procurement these are all related to sustainability so it has three pillars social environmental and economic and uh, corresponding to that uh, another three p are uh, people, profit, and planet. So people is relating to social uh, component. Uh, planet is relating to environmental component, and profit is relating to economic component of uh, people bottom line. So when you uh, mean sustainability, it has three main considerations, social, environmental, and economic. And you need to minimize social impact, minimize environmental impact, at the same time you need to economically uh, sustainable uh, so corresponding to corporate social responsibility another concept is purchasing social responsibility these two are uh, very linked with each other so you have corporate social responsibility goal and in order to achieve that goal you need to maintain procurement or purchasing social responsibility so what it is basically considering social responsibility issues uh, for example uh, treatment with people uh, your profit and uh, planet issues while planning and executing the purchasing and procurement functions so if i give an example uh, you source material from a supplier who is actually not taking care of environment and polluting the environment and affecting society badly so that means you are encouraging something which is uh, uh, affecting negatively affecting the society so if you source uh, products or material from a supplier who is environmentally responsible socially responsible and have ethical code of conduct then uh, you are contributing positively to society so you need to consider corporate social responsibility issues while you source material or semi-finished products from the supplier so that's relating to purchasing social responsibility um, what is needed uh, <clears throat> and why it is needed so for uh, procurement social responsibility, you need to make sure that you are sourcing from the right supplier and you are maintaining sustainability as standard when you are sourcing from your supplier. Okay, and why it is needed? Because uh, uh, meeting a stakeholders requirement. So you have a stakeholders, for example, your customers. Who are the main stakeholders and customers do not want sourcing uh, material from irresponsible sources 
so in unethical sources so that's why you need to meet the requirements of customers you need to meet the requirement of other stakeholders for example your uh, uh, shareholders for example your um, uh, organizational people who are um, working inside the organization they also do not want sourcing from unethical sources so you have um, government another stakeholder you have an um, different agencies non uh, government agencies as well or non government organizations ngos um, so that are the different uh, stakeholders and you need to satisfy them and in order to satisfy them you need to use procurement social responsibility and here is an example that uh, the results show an average annual sales increase of two percent for products with sustainability claims so if you products are sustainable annual sales increase is two percent whereas for general product is only one percent so it is better to being sustainable and source ethically source uh, uh, from a uh, responsible supplier so here is an exa um, is a <clears throat> example from a research of mine which is showing a positive relationship between corporate social responsibility and corporate financial performance so here you see uh, your uh, model one uh, that is showing return on asset um, that's the dependent variable return on asset is depending on uh, your government activities uh, your <clears throat> if you look into wop means workplace safety for example uh p and s that means product and service so your product and service are sustainable or ethical uh, then environmental uh, it's uh, your product is environmentally responsible uh, then com that means community score so it's all our csr variables and you see there is a positive relationship between there is no negative constant is uh, different thing constant is for intercept so but if you look into the independent variable and dependent variable relationship all are positive that means if you have uh, if you have um, good csr practice you have good financial performance okay So similarly, in model two, we are showing uh, return on equity also have a positive relationship with CSR variables. So I have uh, received one question. Uh, products with sustainable tag is expensive compared to conventional products. Will product buy it uh, if it is expensive? For example, Nike. Uh, so yes uh good question uh, whenever organizations uh, adopt sustainability practice uh, at the first stage of the product life cycle the products are expensive uh, comparative to a, a non-sustainable product or traditional product but over time whenever you will uh, gain the benefits uh, from sustainability practice then actually uh, you can reduce cost i can show you um, one uh, video clip of, of ikea way of procurement you will see in that case what ikea managers ta manager tell is about a positive relationship a negative relationship between sustainability practice and cost so if you improve sustainability practice it will help reducing cost and ultimately you can serve your customer uh, cheaper than the traditional product in the long run so initially it will be expensive but in the long run it will be uh, cheaper because for example if you use energy efficient technology then you can reduce cost uh, from energy efficiency if you have uh you know 
a quality product then you can reduce uh, defection uh, you can increase customer satisfaction and if your customer are satisfied then you can produce in larger scale which will further reduce the cost of production so there are different um, life cycle stages and over um, the maturity stage uh, you will see cost is reducing i think uh, you got the answer so next uh, increasing demand for psr uh, you will see uh, three case studies uh, one is apple another is uh, um, a printer and the other one is um, coca cola so you will be solving a case study during the tutorial session it's about apple and we'll be discussing them um, in detail so these are these are relating to your case study on apple uh, challenges in implementing csr so yes there are a um, lot of challenges uh, while uh, you will implement you will try to implement csr for example general perception of people is that if you want to implement csr it will add cost and ultimately customer may not buy uh, with higher cost okay so there are a lot of uh, perception relating to cost relating to uh, you know feasibility uh, of the product relating to design so many issues so here is one of the research uh, result from my study um so what are the barriers or challenges uh, for example lack of awareness uh, lack of awareness among employees general employees and the management people so usually management people are a bit uh, you know laggards sometimes laggards in implementing sustainability because they think it will add cost uh, non-compliance of uh, some social issues in organization so in some of the countries you see non-compliance tendency so they don't care so the, that are uh, some uh, important problems as well so absence of sustainability strategy uh, many of the organizations uh, do not have sustainability strategy at all so if you do not have uh, sustainability strategy then you cannot implement uh, CSR practices. Absence of adequate governance. Uh, so uh, how will you govern whether your organizational uh, people are practicing sustainability or your supply chain people are practicing sustainability? So lack of governance as well. Similarly, you will see uh, barriers relating to environmental sustainability practices. So I have mentioned um, a list of social sustainability challenges to social sustainability factors and environmental sustainability factors. Uh, you can uh, go through and if you have any problem to understand, let me know. These are all easy things. Uh, six steps uh, for, to responsible buying. How do you ensure responsible buying? So one of the effective ways is establishing good relationship with supplier. So if you have a good relationship with your supplier and other supply chain partners, then you <coughs> can cooperate with them. You can <coughs> share ideas, you can collaborate with them and jointly improve sustainability performance. Make sure your communication are clear and timely. So you are communicating with your supplier uh, in the right time. And it's clear what your expectation is clear to your supplier. So the supplier can comply with your expectation relating to sustainability. Um, establish sustainable pricing with the supplier. So sometimes we see uh, we are more uh, towards price competition and then we press our suppliers uh, to reduce uh, price but in that case uh, if the supplier agree with you probably it comes with uh, some compromise with sustainability factors for example um, if you uh, um, force your supplier to reduce cost to reduce price in that case uh, they may uh, 
compromise with uh, payment of uh, fair wages uh, to its employees. So that's a problem. May compromise with environmental standard. Uh, therefore, uh, you need to consider uh, these steps, give clear lead times and payments. So lead time shall also be adequate enough. For example, products coming from China, how many days of production lead time and uh, transportation lead time on, is needed. You need to um, think it carefully and uh, you need to um, negotiate with your supplier according uh, to the requirements and you should be justifiable while you are negotiating relating to lead time. You need to provide adequate lead time to them so that they can produce in time. Otherwise, they can um, force their employees to finish uh, the production target uh, within the short lead time you have set up with your supplier. So similarly, you see uh, the steps are mentioned here. You can go through and let me know if you have any problem to understand. So mini case study on Tesco. So here Tesco um, is a giant retailer and you see their CSR practices and KPIs relating to that. Uh, for example, economic, uh, relating to economic KPI, what they do, local sourcing. Uh, relating to environmental KPI, they man, uh, maintain, try to maintain energy efficiency. So year on percentage reduction of usage, uh, um, for example, your electricity US usage, water usage or consumption, uh, then vehicle efficiency, um, if uh, whether you are using uh, energy efficient vehicle or not, recycling. So what is the rate of recycling of the products? Uh, is it 50% or more or less than 50%? Uh, so then relating to social uh, KPI, you see computer for schools. So they donate comp computers for local schools. Charitable donation around 1%. Percent so to support local community, um, employee retention and training. Um, this is another social uh, KPI. So you are retaining your employees and you are serving your employees. You are training your employees for their future development and growth. Uh, supply chain labor standard uh, training staff and uh, suppliers so that uh, they can maintain um, leverage standard in their organization. And also in your organization, you are training your staff to comply with leverage standard. So these are some of the examples uh, that how companies uh, set KPI corresponding to CSR practices. And this example is dealing with um, Tesco, how they maintain CSR in their practices. Uh, I way of procurement, uh, we will uh, check this video uh, during the tutorial session and you will be solving these questions. Social accountability um, 8000 said by Social Accountability International. So what it is actually different organizations, uh, not for profit organizations mainly. They set up uh, ethical standard and social standard, environmental standard. Probably you know about uh, GRI or Global Reporting Initiative. Similar to that, Social Accountability 8000 is also another initiative which is re um, responsible for social accountability um, practices uh, and setting a standard uh, for social accountability practices in different organization and certify different organizations according to their co code of conducts. Uh, so you see what is the purpose? Uh, this international standard specifies requirements for social ac accountability to enable a company to develop, maintain and enforce policies and procedures in order to manage those issues uh, which it can control or influence. So develop, maintain, and enforce policies and procedures. So this is a type of uh, 
agency, international agency, which will help organizations to, uh, or govern organizations in order to improve its social accountability performance. Demonstrate to interested parties that policies, procedures, and practices are in conformity with the requirements of this standard. So uh, this is, uh, as I told you, one of the agencies uh, that um, are responsible for certifying organizations uh, after evaluating their social sustainability practices. Uh, then ethical trading initiative is another uh, uh, agency uh, which basically looks after employment is freely chosen freedom to join unions safe clear conditions uh, for the employees no child labor living wages to be paid fair working hours no discrimination so these are the different uh, factors that ethical trading initiative evaluates uh, to its clients or its members. Uh, similarly, ILO, International Labor Organization, this is worldwide um, organization. And this organization basically safeguard the rights of the employees in the organization. So it provides guidelines on child labor, protection of women workers, uh, hours of work uh, the, so that no forced labor is imposed, rest and holidays with pay, whether employees are getting enough rest uh, in a long hour shift and uh, whether uh, they have holiday and uh, some other benefits. Uh, so this organization also uh, monitors uh, the practices of different uh, companies, whether they are complying with the ILO standard to safeguard the interest of the employees. Um, so then fair trade is another initiative. So it's a trading partner development with the supply chain members, okay, uh, to ensure um, uh, some of the uh, basic principles like engage with stakeholders understand the supplier country context transparent communication uh, with the supply chain members price to cover cost of labor and capital employed uh, develop partnering relationship uh, throughout the supply chain for example you have a grower or producer in africa and you are buying uh, those products say, here in Australia. So uh, you as a buyer, you have to manage relationship and partnering relationship with the growers or producers in Africa and need to make sure that they are not exploited and they are getting their fair price. Um, the employees there are treated well and they are not discriminated. So based on this principle, uh, Fair Trade uh, Certification Agency uh, issue certificate. So you will see this mark in some of the uh, products. So for example, Fair Trade Coffee, okay? Uh, fair Trade Chocolate, uh, Fair Trade Tea, and many other Fair Trade products. So basically, when our organizations maintain the standard of fair trade, uh, then fair trade certifying ag uh, agency will provide this stamp and tell that these are fair trade products. Best practice, uh, what buyers can do to improve labor conditions. So you are a uh, supply manager or you are a procurement manager, then what will you need to do uh, in order to ensure sustainability uh, in the supply chain. So avoid putting undue pressure on suppliers that might impact on workers. So undue pressure relating to either cost or lead time. Uh, so you need to be careful. Uh, it should be justified, uh, okay? So if you uh, force your supplier to supply within 10 days, then the, the supplier probably forcing their employees to meet that deadline and produce the product whether 
working extra hour and forcefully uh, is the most important whether the supplier is forcefully employing its employees to supply in time uh, think about effect on prices you said so what price uh, you have set after negotiation uh, during negotiation are you focusing more on price is it something not uh, uh, justified with your supplier uh, is it coming with uh, compromising with many other sustainability issues uh, give reasonable time scale for suppliers to address areas of non-compliance if you find uh, non-compliance uh, according to your standard then what are you doing are you straightly cutting off or you are providing the supplier uh, in observation period or observation uh, time so uh, you can you cannot directly cut relationship you need to put them on observation or probation and see whether they are improving their performance over time if they do not uh, improve their performance uh, relating to social and environmental issues then ultimately what you can do you can um, uh, after uh, notice um, then you can suspend and uh, cut off relationship with the supplier um, then help your major supplier to share good practice so you uh, have different suppliers and good uh, good suppliers can share its practice uh, and you can communicate with the others uh, group activity relating to case study we will be doing those things in uh, uh, tutorial session now i am uh, starting discussion on electronic procurement before going to electronic procurement do you have any question i guess no uh, so let's start electronic procurement so what is this Usually, uh, electronic procurement is using internet and e-procurement application or software to operate the transaction aspects of requisitioning, authorizing, ordering, receiving, um, and payment process. So, transactional aspects. Uh, so, day-to-day -day transactional issues um, um, can be automated using electronic procurement um, because you um do not need to uh, place manual purchase order what you can do um, you check the requirements of the uh, various departments and if you see the uh, particular department needs uh, some products uh, which are usually either uh, leverage product or um, it's a routine item then you can straight away use electronic procurement so using internet and electronic procurement application you can source material in short time and cheaper cost why it is cheaper because it's a um, automated uh, process for example you do not need to place a purchase order manually so whenever uh, you will see um, products are needed um, it's uh, less than the uh, mean level or, or very close to mean level then uh, e procurement application will automatically place order to the supplier and uh, automatically approval is also taken if it doesn't cross a particular uh, budget limit so uh, using internet and e procurement application for uh, transaction aspect of procurement is electronic procurement on the other hand e sourcing is using internet to make decision and form strategies for procurement so in the sourcing part you see uh, using internet and electronic procurement software or application to make decision for strategies for procurement form strategies for procurement so in that case you are collecting information uh, in your e procurement application you have a catalog for different products and corresponding to that catalog you will see a list of suppliers then you can check their offers corresponding to different list of products and then uh, you um, 
can get a compare uh, comparative analysis of uh, cost, lead time, and all those things so corresponding to different suppliers, and then you can take a decision. Okay, this supplier uh, or that supplier is better in terms of lead time, in terms of price. So ultimately, you can take a decision. Uh, so e-sourcing basically is a more research aspect, uh, finding information and analyzing that. On the other hand. Uh, e-procurement is a uh, more transaction aspect uh, that's uh, what we do usually day-to-day -day, uh, placing purchase order and execution of those uh, can be done electronically or electronic procurement can be applied directly for those products which are routinely uh, sourced and is not strategic in nature for your organization uh, here are some of the applications for electronic procurement you see uh, here um, like uh, Kralzik matrix you see four different type of product uh, critical leverage routine uh, bottleneck so in case of routine product uh, vendor managed inventory uh, or web forms uh, can be used on the other hand if you look into critical items or strategic items uh, you see extranet so extranet direct um, relationship with your organization with external organizations like your suppliers so you have direct integration with your suppliers you can check their system um, if uh, for example you want to see the inventory uh, in your um, suppliers and or your buyers and you can um, get those information uh, through using extranet you can um, log into the other company system and you can pull necessary information that you need for decision making. So uh, usually for critical products, you need extra net connection with your suppliers uh, so that you can um, communicate easily uh, as well as uh, you can uh, reduce the cost. Um, similarly, you see bottleneck items, uh, also you need extra net. Uh, and in case of leverage item you see online bidding so there are different uh, types of e-procurement applications for different type of products uh, as i told you for critical item and for bottleneck items the items are very important and you must need those uh, material in order to finish production otherwise you cannot so that's why they are critical or their bottleneck and uh, you need to ensure how to manage performance for critical and bottleneck products so what are the procurement benefits reducing purchase cycle time because system is oper uh, automated you do not need to manually de do anything there is less chance of error enhancing budgetary control because uh, whenever you uh, calculate the cost of material and then before going to uh, supplier before placing order to supplier it needs to be approved by finance department so finance department will get a uh, notification from erp systems that uh, you need to approve uh, this uh, uh, this batch of uh, procurement and if it is uh, less than uh, the limit uh, if you do not cross the limit, then finance department will approve. So finance department approval is through the system and everything is done by the system, which is uh, having less chance of error, less chance of misunderstanding. And as it is automated, it is doing quicker. Uh, uh, eliminating administrative error time, all those things. So these are the e-procurement benefits. Uh, then what are the obstacles to implement e-procurement in any organization? First of all, high cost, okay? You need to buy, you need to spend several million dollars in order to buy uh, high level uh, electronic procurement applications. Um, lack of technical expertise, uh, that's another factor. If you do not have technical expertise uh, for 
um, implementing electronic procurement in your organization, you need to hire them. And sometimes people do not want to hire new people uh, to reduce cost. So lack of technical expertise, poor supplier relationship. So electronic procurement may end up with uh, less communicate, less face-to-face -face communication with supplier, which may go uh, or end it up with lack of uh, you know relationship with supplier. So the other uh, issues are perceived lack of real benefits, security issues, low priority. So please go through those and let me know if you have any confusion. Uh, here in this slide you see five uh, main five main savings uh, driver for electronic procurement. So uh, starting with transactional benefits. So you will adopt electronic procurement because it automates the transaction process, which will reduce administrative cost and time. Improved compliance. So as it is in system, it is uh, available to everybody. It is transparent and improved compliance is possible. Uh, improved payment uh, and electronic payment. So whenever you do electronic payment, so it's uh, it helps uh, ele electronic payment easier. Um, so that is another uh, benefits of electronic procurement because it uh, streamlines the payment process. Management information quality. So information managing information quality. Uh, that is another benefit of electronic procurement in the sense that it is system generated data and system generated data are good data uh, getting directly from the system and more reliable so you can use those data for uh, further analysis so management information uh, improve quality of uh, <coughs> uh, mis or management information systems here in this slide you will see some of the um, reasons why uh, buyers use electronic options for example in proposed uh, as a trial or pilot so implementing electronic auction is just a pilot project and people are trying to get feedback from the pilot project how it works uh, process in improvement auction and uh, auction are uh, lo long-term strategy so some of the organizations they use auction as a strategy so that's why they use electronic auctions um, so you see there are many reasons and uh, these all are self-explanatory why organizations use electronic auctions um, barriers to electronic procurement uh, though there are a lot of benefits there are barriers as well for example potential high cost of integrating electronic procurement tools with erp system so a system to system integration process is always challenging so your uh, it experts uh, shall uh, sit together and see uh, how can they solve uh, those potential problems uh, of integration um with procurement tools and erp systems a uh, soft aspect of procurement cannot be considered so some of the products for example strategic products you need assurance not only for uh, product quantity but uh, product uh, assurance relating to lead time assurance relating to qu quality quantity lead time and many other assurance so, so um the other thing is commitment of the supplier so those type of uh, trust communication commitment these are uh, lacking in case of electronic procurement uh, good suppliers feel reluctant to bid because they know that they have a lot of buyers and they buy um to the <coughs> So they buy uh, directly from the supplier uh, using electronic procurement. But soft aspect is always important uh, relating to critical and strategic product. If you avoid soft aspects, 
if you focus only on automating the transactional process then uh, your procurement will not be uh, successful in achieving your organizational goal so uh, barrier to electronic procurement is it sometimes avoid soft aspect of procurement and uh, good suppliers may feel reluctant uh, to go with the electronic procurement because uh, they are critical suppliers they want uh, more communication with the supplier and try to build long-term commitment uh, regular communication with the buyer so uh, we will solve worksheet during the uh, tutorial session but by this time uh, uh, mcdm is also be uh, done during tutorial qfd practice will also be done during tutorial these all are tutorial slides um, relating to sustainable corporate social responsibility and electronic procurement if you have any question please uh, ask me quickly uh, then we will go for break any question no no one no question then i i assume that uh, you understood uh, all the lecture slides that i have discussed now uh, we have a break uh, before starting our tutorial session so you have a 10 minutes break i will see you uh, at around 7 pm thank uh, thank you